Hello, everybody. We're about to do our first activity for Chem 241, Fall 22. And it's this activity right here. It's really over here. But this semester in particular, I am trying to help you realize the relevance of organic chemistry. I know it's misspelled as a rook. That's a chess piece, by the way. It has a K there. Uh, but I used to play chess a little bit. And, you know, I thought it was cute. And our activity is going to be about Lewis structure. Why are they relevant? This is going to be a verbal story only, okay? What is a Lewis structure? Well, it's a representation of the valence electron in a molecule, right? Anytime you hear the name Lewis, what he is known for is valence electron and education. He was a good teacher. And why is that important? Well, if we can figure out the Lewis structure of a molecule, then we can also use what we drew to predict its geometry. And if we know a little bit about bonding, like the three types of bonds, this will be review for some and looking ahead for others. You've got your pure covalent bond. You've got your polar covalent bond. And you have your ionic bond. Some of you remember those things, right? And there was even a guideline based on electronegativity to predict each of those types of bonds. Please read about those in chapter one. All right. Well, if you've got the proper Lewis structure and you redrew it with the right geometry, now you can put what's called dipoles on your Lewis structure for each of the polar bonds. And then if you can add those dipoles together, which are skills we're going to learn, then you can predict the polarity of the molecule. And why is polarity relevant? Polarity is very relevant. Molecules that are very polar tend to go to areas in your body. And I like focusing on the body because we're mostly here for health, healthcare fields, right? So always be talking about medicine in your body. So if you have highly polar molecules, they're going to tend to accumulate in your bloodstream where the environment is aqueous. If you have highly nonpolar molecules, then they tend to accumulate in what's called your adipose tissue. That's a nice way to say fat tissue. Everybody has it, even thin people, okay? You need to have it because there's needed chemistry going on in that adipose tissue. All right, so that's pretty relevant. It all starts with the Lewis structure skill that we're going to review, because I know you had it at the end of your 141. And then we're going to apply, you know, a little more to it so we can use it in this class. And make it relevant for organic chemistry. It tells us where molecules tend to go. Polarity. So we have these three examples in front of you. And the first one here I put for old time's sake because it's an inorganic molecule. Okay. And we have to follow the steps starting with the counting of the valence electron. We have to count valence electrons for inorganic molecules. For organic molecules, the good news is you don't. You don't have to count the valence electron. But you do need to know the nature of the, of the bonding for the, the atoms that we're going to talk about. There's not a lot of them. You have to know their nature. More on that in a second. Let's do this first one. Valence electrons. How do you find that information? For iodine, that's the first element there. How many valence electrons does an iodine provide? Seven. He looked at the top of that periodic table, which is the same as the periodic table that you get with every exam. 
Every exam for the last eight years is posted at Moodle with answer key. In Moodle, there's a practice one, a practice for test one area, practice for test two area, practice for test three area with nothing but old exams and answer key. Always start at the bottom of that area, the most recent exam. You will say, after you've taken the test, every single question. He asked the same question. He only changes the names of the molecules, the formulas of the molecule. The words are exactly the same. Yes. So your goal is to get to the point where you can answer those exam questions. That's your only goal in this part. You have actual exams with answers. We work on practice questions in this class all the time. That's all we do. We're doing it now. Okay. So iodine, seven valence electrons. Oxygen, how many up there? Six, and there's four oxygen. Now, if you have a minus charge, does that mean you have an extra valence electron or you're missing a valence electron? It has extra, that's why it's a minus charge, right? Because electrons have a minus charge. Electrons have a minus charge. You got an extra valence electron, you get a minus charge. 24, 25, 32. I'm not going to count the valence electrons for the organic molecules. One, it takes too much time. Or two, we don't need to. Okay. When we're done, we have to put 32 valence electrons on that structure. We're going to do part A first. Um, what do you put in the middle? She likes iodine. What was the reason your teacher gave you for that? I think they said the left electronegative atom goes in the middle. Then you go to ammonia, which is NH3. What's the most electronegative atom? And H is less electronegative. You want to put H in the middle? Never put H in the middle. It only makes how many bonds? One. Avoid putting O in the middle at all costs. And really avoid oxygen bonded to oxygen. At all costs. What does it mean by at all costs? If it's possible to do it without bonding oxygen to oxygen, you must. Oxygen does not like bonding to oxygen. I say, okay, that's great. I memorized it. Why? Don't memorize it. Why does oxygen not like bonding to oxygen? Oxygen is the second most blank element on the periodic table. Yeah, thank you very much, electronegative. The students take too much time on those questions, I start hangman on the board. So it's fun, but we didn't need to go there. Yeah, so you want to review electronegativities. Uh, uh, when you're reading chapter one, you'll see they show up in two different locations in the chapter one with the same table twice. That's how important they are. And oxygen is the second most electronegative element in all of chemistry, right? In this course, it's pretty much the de facto most electronegative element because fluorine's not that common in organic molecules. It, it's there, but it's not, you don't see it very often. So if you're an oxygen, you're very electronegative. That means you like pulling strongly on electrons and bonds. That's all that means, right? How strongly do you pull electrons and bonds is what electronegativity is. So you got an oxygen bonded to an oxygen. They're both pulling electrons because that nucleus is starved to get electrons near it. Near the end of the row. It's got a lot of protons crammed into a small space. So I say, bring some electrons close. Come on. We need stabilization here. And there's an oxygen next door saying, uh-uh. I feel the same way as you. So those electrons are just held loosely in the middle. And looking for any excuse to bond to something else that's elect electronegative. Okay, and in this case, you just put an iodine in the middle, four oxygens around it, and the oxygens are not bonded to each other. Well, my iodine is a little, uh, little high there. There we go. When you made those four bonds, how many electrons did you use? Eight electrons, because each one has two. Sorry, eight. Electrons in four bonds because each bond has two electrons. So there's the minus eight for the four bonds in the skeleton. You got to come up with 24 or more, right? In blue. What did your teacher tell you in 141? 
lone pairs on the outside until their octets are full, right? In this case, that does finish it off because each oxygen needs six more. And six times four is 24. If you want an example of one where that didn't finish the structure this morning's example, watch that video too, we did a different example. And I will always try to make sure we do different examples in morning and night. Please watch both. Come on, the more you get practice with the better, right? And you've, you've got your 24, so you're done. You think you're done. You think you're done. But not done because too many formal charges. What the heck's a formal charge? I don't see any formal charges. You're going to see there's five formal charges on there. Now, don't tell me how to do a formal charge. I'm asking this question. What is a formal charge? What is it? What does it represent? What does it mean? It means only one thing, everybody. I want to compare the charge of the Sorry, how many electrons are owned, owned as in I own a car, okay? Uh, how many electrons are owned by each atom compared to how many electrons it owned on, when it was on the periodic table with just its valence electrons up there, okay? Uh, for oxygen up here, it owns all six of those electrons that are in the lone pairs. It's not sharing them, it owns them. It owns... In a in an ideal world, it owns half the electrons in the bond because what, what is another name for that kind of bond? So you say again, covalent bond. I like that word because it's co means share, share with. Okay, so pretend it's a fair world. Iodine and oxygen go into the divorce part. They're sharing two electrons. That's before the divorce. After the divorce, how many do they own in from those two? One each, it's a fair court. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, if you're sharing two, it's like you own one. So, let's go total up the oxygen here. Two, four, six, seven. It owns seven in that molecule. Up there, it owns six. It's got a VI on the top of the column, right? So, does this have more valence electrons or less valence electrons in its ownership than when it was on the periodic table? There's more, so it better have a minus charge, and it's only one more, right? So I get a minus one. And I hope you agree that each oxygen on this structure so far has three lone pairs and one sigma, so the same formal charge. I got four formal charges there. What about iodine? It shares eight, right? It's got four bonds. How many does it own with four bonds? Four. Periodic table, it owns seven. It owns three less electrons than the periodic table here. What's your formal charge? If you own less electrons than the periodic table, then you get a plus charge of some kind. When it's three less, it's three plus. That is Awful. You know what you got for this Lewis structure on the test? Zero points. None. It's like you, you shouldn't have bothered starting. A formal charge of minus one or plus one is bad. A formal charge of plus two or minus two is incredibly bad. It's not like twice as bad. No, no, no. Thousands of times worse. And if you have a formal charge of minus three or plus three, you're not, you don't exist. It's like incredibly bad. It doesn't happen. Okay. And we got to fix that. And the easy way to fix that is to take some lone pairs from the outside where the minuses were. And instead of owning both of those, share them. So I can get rid of all the formal charges except one. And if I'm lucky, I can copy all my work here. 
and do something to get rid of formal charges. So watch carefully on the video. I can get rid of this minus charge by taking a lone pair off and sharing it instead. I'm putting it back, but it's a bond. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said double bond. I now have a double bond, but first I had a sigma bond that was green. And I added a second bond, which is called a pi bond. You must have a sigma bond between any two atoms that are bonded, because that's the best place for electrons. They're right between the atoms. That's the most stable location, right? But after you've used that location, just like with electron configurations, after you've used a location, can you put more electrons in there? Not when it's full. Next, right? What's next? Not sigma bonds. Pi, where the electrons are not exactly between. They're above and below. Not quite as stable, but better than not being a bond electrons like being between atoms not on one only right so that got rid of two uh well my iodine is now three not three plus anymore it's two plus i'm gonna just erase the whole thing because when i'm finished it's gonna go down to nothing uh, i can do that again over here to get rid of this minus Take that lone pair off, make it a pi. Sorry, I erased some of my bonds here. I'll take the lone pair off the top and make it a pi. Notice I did not really remove the electrons, I just moved them. And that is, uh, that is one of the Lewis structures for this molecule. That one would get full credit. And am I terribly upset that I couldn't get rid of the final minus? I knew that was gonna happen before I started the question. Why did I know I wouldn't be able to get rid of all the charges before I started the question? It's a minus one charge. You gotta have at least one atom with a minus charge. And that's exactly what we have. And then, even though this thing has a charge, which makes things unstable, that charge is stabilized by this action. Maybe. Somebody can tell me what this action is here. And I'll go monotone for this. Oh, I did that, and I'm going to compensate by doing that. I should have been red. And that's a preview. Those curved arrows, I don't expect you to know what those mean. But it does look like electrons moving, doesn't it? That's exactly what it is. What's the word for it? Electrons moving within the same molecule. Yes, thank you. That's the resonance. And it doesn't have to be at the bottom when I'm done. It can be on the left. Double bond on the bottom. And I haven't had it on the top yet, have I? So we're looking ahead. So what the only thing I need to see on the quiz, I know there's been a lot of writing here, oops, is that first one, right? I'm gonna highlight the only thing I really need to see. I don't even need to see those curved arrows. So if that's the only thing I see on your quiz, that's perfect. This is just extra that I'm doing here. You'll be reading about it all. Resonance. There you go. What does all this mean? Well, one, it's bad to be a charge. Two, it's not as bad if that charge has options of nuclei to be around. It spreads the the harm, the, the negative nature of having a charge. Could have been a positive charge, which would also have a negative nature because unstable being charged. But some things that are charged are quite stable because they can move the burden around here with things like 
resonant. Okay? So this is not the end of this activity, but I'm going to stop the video because it's getting a little long. And then we're going to finish the, the same activity with another video.